Um, tell me, did you ever hear of Ween? Yeah. Yeah, well, what did you hear about Ween? Oh. Ah, I play all the instruments, and what we do is when we play live, I, I pre record all of the instruments on a, a, a portable studio, four track tape recorder, if you're familiar with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I play guitar live over the bass and drum tracks, and Gene sings. And so it, it's kind of, kind of neat because there's about, um, you know, there's a, a world of noise. It was 88 or 89, I think they opened for a Fugazi and Henry Rollins, and that was the night they, they got booed off the stage, actually. You got to What's the proverb, asshole? What are you saying? What? Drums? Who are you? Hey, that's Papa G. Weed, you fucker! Hey, man! Come on! Yeah! Everybody, fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! any more songs out of nowhere out of a total musical vacuum out of total darkness comes one 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 ray of light and it's fucking ween there's still two people on a tape machine i, th I thought it was ridiculous the most ridiculous like retarded thing i ever saw in my entire life <laughs> If you own the Ween album, the, the album, crucial squeegee lip, lip, it opens with a talk of how we were in Mrs. We Slack's room, room in typing, room, typing room, class when we first sighted Boogneesh from out the window. This, this is the typing room if you want to look in. There's computers in there now. And uh, this window is the window through which uh, Boogneesh was first sighted out here in the courtyard. We both sat over there and um, A S D F G H J K L Sam Space. And we had to do that. A Q A Z A space. To be specifically in typing class with Candace and I both saw him at the same time out the, out the window standing in the courtyard of the high school. So immediately uh, we canceled all of our plans for that day and when school ended and we came over and and we we put down what we each told us on tape in the form of the music. That was the perfect thing. Ween, or we used to, or we used to get together and, um, you know, just throw together everything onto a cassette and just listen to it, you know, listen to everything we've done. And, I mean, the whole basis of Ween is to make cassettes for, for good friends of ours, maybe like <laughs> five or six of our friends. Songs that, you know, we know we know these songs will get these people off, you know, and mm -hmm. we just give it to them, we know they appreciate it. That's why Ween started originally. I mean, the rest is... Hi. We're uh, we're doing a documentary on Ween. <laughs> on what? On Ween. We're doing a documentary on Ween. We'd like you I to thought Ween broke up. tell us all you know about Ween. Go ahead. Wait, I thought Ween broke up. Wait. Tell us all you know about Ween. Mickey, I thought Ween broke up. Tell us all you know about Ween. You know, you get two different stories. Oh, they're great, or they're... Uh, the band that plays without a drummer. What do you know about Ween? Ween is the mistress. <laughs> Ween, um, I know that um, Mick is in Ween. Aaron too. 
and it and it has it has three letters that are also in weed. <laughs> you fucked up, you bitch. You really fucked up. The thing I always tell people about weed in those days, uh, and it's amazing because they were so freaking young, but th I mean they were as much if not more a comedy act than a musical act. I mean they were just hilariously funny. Um, what is Ween all about to you? What do you know about Ween? They're good group. And the being of light said that was black and white, he said unto them, spread the word, Bugnish, for Bugnish you follow, and Bugnish shall be always with you. Manager. Tour manager. Uh, it was a snowy day in Cleveland. It was, yeah, right after Halloween. And uh, it had snowed and it was really cold. And not that many people came. Only about 250, I'd say. And uh, so, you know, it was a little whatever. And bummed out, I guess, of the turnout. And they went on stage and it took a couple of songs. And I'm trying to understand what's going on here, you know, not used to tape decks, you know. Uh, and by the end of the set, it was uh, blown away. Like, I couldn't believe, like, wow. And the crowd was going crazy. <laughs>
Yeah, where was your first gig and what kind of place was it? It was in a bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> of course. It's in Scott Lowe's bedroom in Solbury, Pennsylvania. Scott Lowe, no, I, that name sounds familiar. He's uh, he's on our records, actually. Right, okay. Yeah, he's on Scott Lowe, he's a big radio guy, too. I say, he's a big DJ. Yeah, he is yes. That's right, that's right, he's a big star. Yes, he totally. is, and if uh, he's one of the best. He yeah. introduced us, actually. Really? Yep. Yeah. yeah. I checked. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. The Bedroom Studios, in association with M the D Productions, is pleased to present to you... The band that was endorsed to be listened to real loud while making pancakes by Dean Ween. Clan of the DM. Ween! We're not being amplified, okay. Now we're gonna try this one more time. Fucks up and we're done. Um, I wanted to know what the official date was that your band started up. Uh, don't know. I don't know. It was um, I think it was February of ninety or eighty four or something. Eighty four. Yeah, eighty four. Eighty four. Eighty four. Eighty five. Wow, so you guys been 10 years. Yeah. Yeah, we started when we were, you know, 14 year olds. What was the first song you guys wrote together? You remember? Yolk. It's called Yolk. Yolk. How'd that go? You remember? It, it just sucked. I mean, really? Any way you look at it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Okay. Okay, this is called Yolk. We like for everybody to have a whole lot of fun. We get pretty ill sometimes at the expense of other people. But when exactly did Ween like first take formation? 1984, the beginning of 1984. So it's been a pretty long last. Yeah, day. really, it has actually. We're only uh, like 18 now. Well, Aaron's 19. I'm 18. Papa Gina, who's not here. The pro actually, I, I talked to a few people. They can't find the Bird of Player record. Around. Yeah, it's really um, it's really tough. It's available by mail though. It's available, um, I don't know, I think I know, it's P.O. Box 39, it's right on that Scorn Flakes record okay, there. Okay. The Dead Milkman left for our tour for the Bucky Fellini album, which was in 87. Uh, and when we got back from that tour, uh, he was an amazing guitar player. When we, when we left, he was like a, you know, a noisy, noise guitar player or something. <laughs> Right after graduation, when when uh, uh, you know th those two moved in together, and you know they had the four tracks set up, and all of a sudden, like real music started, like you know like actual structured music, and Mickey was taking, you know Mickey had been taking guitar lessons. Got a little girl, smile, we're one Working, on the body, on the she comes my back when we stand in the shower. She watches me pee every hour on the hour. Put on your coat, we're going out eating. You've 
the bell, yeah, you meet Jean. Got no money, but she don't care. Never in the world did God make a bell, no, never in the world did God make a bell like you and me. And the cat makes three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I do believe it's the best thing ever. I stay out late, she ain't suspicious. Sleep all day and she does the dishes. No, 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 no. Hot damn. What a woman. I just can't believe how lucky I am. What are you taping? I don't want to feel the heat from somebody. Hey, Claude. What's happening, my man? What's going on? Not much, you know. I'm just chilling, you know. I'm chilling with my boys in the hood. Playing a little skins, you know what I mean? It's all about money. How's it feel to be down south? You know, I feel reconnected, man. I feel in touch with the fucking, you know, the roots, man. You know what I'm saying? We're going back to the beginning. They were very poor at the time. Very poor. They we were struggling. They kept going and going and recording and recording day in and day out. Night after night, just writing songs. It's all they were focused on. They were in love with that four-track machine. When we recorded the pod, that was a real heavy time because um, Dean had uh, Dean had had mononucleosis. Thing that ever happened to our band, catching Bono. Why was that? <laughs> it's a humbling, it's a very humbling experience. Well, no, we just explored this like outer <laughs> realm of music that you know. It's like when the Beatles discovered acid, when we discovered Mono, it was like <laughs> rock and roll will never be the same after that. It's nothing like a, you know, a heavily antibiotic mononucleosis guitar solo. You know? <laughs> it's the best thing in the whole world. I'd, I'd head over there early in the morning, um, you know, when I knew that, that both of them were passed out. Like, they each, they each had a mattress. There was a one-bedroom place, and, like, so there was a mattress on either side of the room, and, and you know, they'd be passed out in, in both of them. So I'd just kind of let myself in, you know, roll, roll a big, fat joint, light it up, and once I got it smoking really well, I'd go into the room, and I'd just sit on one of their beds, just blowing hits in their, in, in their face, and then go to the other one, do that, and then wake them up. And, you know, tell them it's time to get up and start moving, and they'd be all sludged out and shit. Are you sure, man? <laughs> yeah, sure. Are you sure, man? Yeah, sure. That's it. Go away. Yeah, sure. I I I'm going to go for a kiss. So. <laughs> I was. Fuck it. <laughs> Wait, we got one more song yet. Acquire the feel for FRF4. K-I-K-9. D, E, D, 3, J, N, and so forth.